This is how you add a Flutter app to App Circle. First, go to your Build tab and add a new profile. From a target operating system, either select iOS or Android. For Flutter apps that support both iOS and Android, we need to define two different build profiles. So I'm going to start with the iOS one now. And from the target platform, I'm going to choose Flutter. And then I will just give a name. And then hit save. Once my profile is created, I can connect a Git repository. So we have a variety of options here from GitLab to GitHub, Bitbucket. You, know, you can also connect via SSH or use a public repository. We also support self-hosted GitLab and self-hosted Bitbucket. So I'm going to use GitHub connection now. AppCircle now will fetch all the repositories that I've given access to from GitHub and list them here. Now I do have a list of projects that I've given access to. Let's pick the Flutter project and then hit save. Now I see a list of branches and the commits from those branches in this view. And since I'm going to be making releases from my master branch, I just need to configure that branch first. So I tap config. Now it gives me a form of what to build when building this project. So I can choose an Xcode version. I can choose a build mode. Uh, it's asking me for the Xcode project files path and also a build scheme. But in order to make this easier, we do have this fetch details button, which makes App Circle check the repo and then fill out all these details inside this form. So it is now checking. After checking is complete, we get a pre-filled forms here and we can choose the Xcode version that we want to, uh, we want our project to be built with, but it also fills out the workspace file and the schemes inside this project and you're pretty much basically good to go. But you know, also you can just pick between debug, release and profile build modes. Uh, these two can be changed. We also have three more tabs in the config part here. We will have separate videos for each of them. But when you look at signing, this is about code signing. If you're doing your code signing via your Flutter project, then you don't need to add signing via app circles so that you don't double sign, which will corrupt your IPA file. We also have a distribution tab, which will distribute this app, the IPA file, to either App Store or a list of testers. You can pick a list of testers from here. This is also something that we'll discuss in another video. And you can also pick an environment variable group if you have some custom variables uh, configured in your project. So I will close this. And then the second thing that we need to look at is the workflows. So workflows are actually a list of steps that our build machines will take while building your application. It's pretty much like a recipe and we give you two default workflows to work with. I will just check the details of this push workflow. So these are the steps that our build machines will take while building your project. So it does the build for iOS and it can do another Xcode build if you like. You can do an iOS simulator build afterwards, and then it ex exports build artifacts. So one thing for Flutter projects to note is that in this Flutter install step, when you go to the, its detail, you can just specify a Flutter version because not all Flutter projects are working with the latest stable version. So if you have a specific Flutter version that you need to target, then you need to fill out that in here as well, save here. So that's one thing. And the second thing that you can do is that remove this iOS simulator workflow. In order to modify, add, or remove steps, you have to tap that edit workflow button. And from here, you can just, you know, remove the iOS simulator step. I don't need to build for the iOS simulator. Maybe I really don't need to build Xcode build for devices. I just want to do a Flutter build and check the results, but there are also many other steps you can use for your Flutter projects here. And I will hit save, and I do have my workflow set up. Once I save this, I can just start a build. Let's just build from this latest commit, choose our workflow, and start a manual build. As you can see, my build is started, and it's just going through all those steps in my workflow. But while it does that, let's just check how we can actually trigger builds automatically. And we can do this by going to triggers. We can add new triggers for pushes to any branch that we'd like. 
it could be a new branch that we created while pushing and it could also be like anytime some push happens to any branch so we are actually accepting wildcards here but we will have a separate video on triggers so you can check that out as well let's just go into my build detail right now it's installing the latest version of flutter and it will just start building my project afterwards and after a few minutes my build is complete now let's look at how to add an android version of a flutter app on app circle so i go back to my build and add a new profile as i mentioned and now i will choose android and choose flutter as a platform and let's just give this a name and then hit save now I go to my detail and then connect my repo again. Here's a list of projects that I've given access to. I will choose Flutter again. Okay, I do see my branches, the same branches that I had before. And I will tap config. And now I will have some Android specific files. We don't have the fetch details button this time because most of the things is very streamlined and pre pretty straightforward. So we can choose between an output type for AAB or APK. And also we can choose a build mode as well. Let's just say that we want a debug mode. That doesn't matter. And all these tabs are the same as the iOS version. And then let's check out our workflows. We also give you two default workflows for Android as well. One thing to mention is also, uh, as I said, the Flutter version should be specified if you target a specific Flutter version. And also for the Android sign as well, if you are going to use a V2 signing scheme, then you have to set this to true as well in the Android sign step. But all of these are based on your project. So if you're okay with everything, you can just go back and start a build. Choose your workflow and then start the build. And after a few minutes, just like the iOS version, your app will build just fine. If you encounter any errors, you can just go to our Slack channel to ask. Our support engineers will help you with every step. So feel free to ask any questions on our Slack channel. You can visit our Slack channel by going to slack.appcircle.io. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you on the next videos.